Welcome back to our chess story series. And today we're going a little back in time to the year 2018, where we have two Super Grandmasters playing a Blitz game. And even though I usually don't show Blitz game, this one is an exception because Daniil, who's playing white here, is going to be the former world champion with some world-class tactics. And we'll see how he used the long diagonal and the pin on it to destroy Anand's position. Poor Anand had to give away the whole house, all of his minor pieces, just to keep the king afloat. Let's take a look. We start off with the English opening, where Daniel says, I need this square, this is mine. I need light squares. And Black says, sure, you can have light squares if I can have dark squares. Daniel says, wait, 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 what about my knight? I can get more light squares with the knight. And Black says, not if I get rid of him. Usually the rule is don't take out bishops before knights, take out knights before bishops. But here, Anand wants to bother the knight and see where he's going. Because if he does bother the bishop, which is what happened, we can bother the knight and get the center. If you do nothing, at some point I can get rid of the knight and double your pawns. So for that reason, Dubov says, hi bishop, how are you? Can I eat you? And instead of running back like most people, Anand says, you can, go ahead. You could eat me, but then you're just helping me because you're opening up files for me. And good luck defending with that rook on a1 stuck forever with this watermelon, heavy watermelon that you have to carry on a2 on the rook's shoulders. Okay, so the rook wants nothing to do with that, which is why he did not take and just took out another piece. If the pawn kicks him, which is usually a good idea, then the knight can start traveling and kick out the bishop, as we'll see later. Anand finally kicks out the knight, and Anand is a former world champion, so he knows what he's doing. He's going for the center. He wants to kick out all these pieces and get the full center with a pawn chain, sometimes. Sometimes he just wants to bring back the bishop and say, ooh, I have a window. Let's see how it'll work out. Usually, we don't put knights over here because they're blocking the leader pawns. They're blocking Eric and Derek. But here it's not so clear because, you know, where is that bishop going? We don't like blocking leader pawns because the bishops are stuck. Yet this guy is coming here and that guy coming to b2 to bother the dark square. So this is actually fine. Okay. After the knight came out, we just take out some pieces. The bishop says hello to the light squares. And there is a little clamp on the light squares, but it's only little and we can still pressure the diagonal. Anand says, ooh, but what about my house my house is going to be great what about your house is your house great with all those knights in the way what if i kick away your chimney what's going to happen then king and this king doesn't mind they both just castled and they both think that their kings are safe and it looks like the kings are perfectly safe for now but as the quote i put says chess is 99 percent tactics and you'll see where the not the 90 percent of the tactics comes out and suddenly black's king is in ruins. Let's see how. Rook e8, d4. We open the center because they're underdeveloped, right? In order to get our bishop out, we may need either this long diagonal, so we need to get rid of this pawn, or we may need to get the bishop here. One day we can pin him as well. So for that reason, let's blow open the e pawn. And also if he gives us the center, we can take with the queen and pressure the backwards pawn. Even though it's not fully backwards, they have no friends to protect him with, okay? So we take and take with the knight. The knight can start bothering the pawn, bothering the king, as you'll see later, and the other knight can help. Whereas this guy is going all over the board, you know, knights on the rim, uh, this bishop is not sure about where he's going. That's why this knight is so good. Maybe the bishop comes here, but then the queen doesn't guard the pawn. So it's not so easy, no matter what he does. Daniel says, can I bother your bishop? Because if I take him now, I think that's a good deal. Okay. Uh, I can always kick him away, play b4 later, and take him for free, for that matter. Okay, the bishop ran away, but we have the dark squares coming in. The bishop comes out and... Who's going to stop him? Not that guy. That guy's too far away. Knight before. And I'm saying, please, please, get rid of my knight that's on the rim and open up my file and freeze your backwards pawn and make it bad forever. 
And White said, nope. Leave my knight alone. If you want, you can trade on my terms, but I'm not trading on yours. Okay. Finally, the last bishop comes out and blacks finish development. The good thing for white is that they still have space. They still have the diagonal. They still have the file and they still have a target. Black is saying this could be a target, but yeah, I can always block it. And now the bishop has to find a new home. Okay. This is not a real target, whereas this guy has to run away for real okay when he runs we can start bothering more pieces because it's a lot easier to push white pawns than blacks he has to go back to the room where he can't help he's not centralized whereas my knights are pretty close to the center right away dubov says "Ooh, ooh, target ooh, another target and the knight's helping out his friend at the same time not allowing any you know tricks because the knight and the pawn is covering e3 there is no attack on e2 okay so we're attacking d6 they're trying to do something about our knight trying to get rid of him trying to stop this attack but i think he missed this this move that's coming up i think he wanted to get rid of the knight and you know maybe later get some pressure on e2 if you could get something like here here and then get rid of this guy and then get e2 but he never got the chance because white's bishops have more scope when you have amazing glorious bishops looking down the diagonals and firing away what can these guys do what can that guy do against my glorious bishops this bishop is cooped in this bishop is all right but it's not as good as mine mine is better and so here we have the start of tactics out of nowhere comes the pin pin and win first we make sure he's over here the king is stuck on the dark squares and nobody's helping this knight if you don't take my knight i mean i just got a free pawn that ruins your whole king side that's game over easy but if you do take then who's covering your friend who's helping him oh you want the rook okay so anand says wait, wait, wait. you're gonna take me i take you you take me i take you and then at the end of all that Let's count the pieces. We got three pieces against a rook and a bishop. That's actually a pretty good deal. Now the black pieces will get out of here. They'll start attacking. They start giving problems. And I think black is better, not white. Okay. For that reason, he says, no, 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 no. Who said I have to take? I have the pin. No one's breaking it. No one's doing anything about it. I'm just gonna pull a little trick. And here comes the next trick. Who's guarding the knight? Queen and rook. How can I get rid of the queen? I'll give you three seconds to find this marvelous move. Marvelous tactic. See if you can find it. Get rid of the queen or the rook. Feel free to pause. Three, two, one. The answer is the very strange B4. Out of nowhere, black is faced with a lot of problems number one how do you keep the bishop here because if you move the bishop to before suddenly uh oh queen d4 is coming too to help out of the pin and this guy can't help his brother on f6 now if you try to take with the knight who's guarding the rook oh the queen but wait what was the queen guarding the knight and so if you have to move your queen you lose that knight let's see how Take, 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 and pin and win. Suddenly, it turns out that the queen comes in for a full effect, and no one can help anymore. Not this guy, not that guy. They're too far away. The pin is glorious on the long diagonal. That bishop cannot fight us on the long diagonal. And this queen can try to run back, but if he tries to run back, I'm guessing, I'm guessing he had something like this in mind which looks winning he can also pin first or give a check first both are good in the actual game black decided you know what just have it i don't need it you have it because he couldn't keep it anyways and of course white took and ran away after he takes that night the game is basically over because he has the king side is in ruins his wall is in ruins no bricks on the dark squares this bishop should be over here trying to help dark squares, but he's too far off. This knight, uh, 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 
can't come in can't come in properly he has no way into the action and because that guy can't come in because i'll just chop him he's playing down a knight effectively and not to mention he's already down material right if you count the points right now let's see one two three four five one two three four five even though the actual points may be the same the position is not so very soon he will be down material let's take a look check and here all this this does is basically watch out for back rank and also say bishop g4 is on the way so this rook is not long for this world okay if you try to take which is not to be advised then we have the very cute takes takes skewer so even though it didn't look like his down material effectively he was okay he's going to lose at least a exchange for my bishop okay and not to mention his pieces are horrible so they can't fight to begin with okay they, they all have to guard the king who's in shambles and can't run away i make sure of that okay so the poor world champion playing under time pressure tries to tries to get the knight in there tries to get rid of the bishop but we come for more discoveries we come for all these tricks now the skewer is coming if you're not careful okay uh the queen had to run away and we start collecting collect one pawn for free collect the rook for free if the rook tries to run away i think this will do the trick i think pin and win again will do the trick okay so his position is so bad he can't keep everything together and in the end he ends up losing not only the pawn but also the exchange and after queen h6 black resigned notice how no matter where the bishop goes he's not long for this world queen g7 finishes the game or if you try to run away here what about now where are you running now nowhere to run okay so because he's dropping the bishop he decided he had enough and resigned uh, the queen is also coming for a full effect so wouldn't matter really so what do we see in this game the super tactic knight takes g7 won the day and not only was the knight sack but then we had the b4 sack getting rid of the defenders of this poor guy the long diagonal bishop had no opponent when the dragon is unopposed the dragon breathes flames and finishes the game for white okay so when you're playing make sure this guy is opposed if you're playing against him make sure you try to trade him or at least block him the way that this bishop was blocked by these pawns otherwise these tactics will also come for you